welcome to Vit Sikhya. In our last video on how to read the financial statements of a company, we learned about what a balance sheet is, its components, the fundamental equation that is assets are equal to liabilities plus equity, and lastly using ratio analysis to determine the financial health of a company. In this video, we will learn about the statement of profit and loss, its components, and finally, using ratio analysis on the information from the statement of profit and loss, we will analyze the company's financial performance. And once again, we will use the financial statements of Titan Limited for reference. So let's begin. The statement of profit and loss, also known as the income statement or profit and loss account, is a financial statement that shows the financial performance of a company over a specific period, usually a year. It provides a summary of revenues, expenses and the resulting net profit or loss generated by the company during that period. The P&L statement or income statement is like a report card for a company's financial performance. It has two main sections, revenue and expenses. The revenue section is all about the money that the company makes. It includes income from selling products or services to customers. But guess what? It can also include other types of income, like the interest earned on investments or the rent the company gets from properties it's, it owns. Now let's talk about the expenses section. This is where the company's costs are listed. There are two types of expenses, operating and non-operating. Operating expenses are the everyday costs of running the business. It includes things like employee salaries, rent for office space, utility bills, marketing expenses, and even the materials used to make the products they sell. It's the money the company needs to spend to keep things going smoothly. On the other hand, Non-operating expenses are costs that are directly related to the company's main activities. These can be things like paying interest on loans or debts, taxes owed to the government, or any other expenses that don't have a direct impact on the company's sales. So how do we figure out if the company made a profit or a loss? We subtract the total expenses from the total revenue. If the result is a positive number, it means the company made more money than it spent, and that's a profit. But if the result is negative, it means the company spent more than it made, and that's a loss. The PL statement is a super important statement because it helps investors, creditors, and managers understand how well the company is doing financially. It tells us if the company is making money, controlling its expenses, and ultimately, if it's profitable or not. It's like a financial report card that shows the company's financial health and performance. Let's look at the P&L statement of Titan Limited for better clarity. The statement begins with revenue from operations and other income, followed by the expenses section. This includes the cost of raw materials, changes in inventory from work in progress to finished goods, which are the operating expenses, and employee benefits, financial costs, depreciation, and other non-operating expenses. The difference between the revenue and expenses gives us profit before exceptional items and tax. And after deducting the exceptional items and tax expenses, we get the profit for the year that is rupees 2,180 crores. What you see next is comprehensive income. This income is a way to look at a company's financial performance from a wider perspective, beyond just the profit or loss it made. It's like zooming out to see the bigger picture. You see, comprehensive income includes not only the profit or loss from the company's regular business activities, but also other gains or losses that don't show up on the regular income statement. It consists of the changes in a company's wealth or value, 
no matter where they come from. Let's say a company owns stocks in another company. If the value of these stocks goes up or down, that change is part of comprehensive income. Foreign currency translation adjustments are also part of the comprehensive income. If a company operates internationally and deals with different currencies, fluctuations in the exchange rates can affect its financial position. It's like taking into account the ups and downs of the company's investments. There are even things like gains or losses from hedging activities. Companies use financial tools to protect themselves from risks, like changes in interest rates or exchange rates. The gains or losses from these tools are included in comprehensive income. And let's not forget about the changes in the value of pension plans. If a company has employee pension plans, any changes in the value of these plans, like due to investment returns or interest rate changes, are part of comprehensive income. By looking at all these additional elements, comprehensive income provides a fuller picture of a company's financial performance and how its overall wealth is changing. It's a way to account for all the gains and losses that affect a company's financial position, even if they don't directly show up on the regular income statement. So it's like putting together all the pieces of the financial puzzle to get a better understanding of the company's financial health. In case of Titan Limited, they have mentioned employee benefit plans and p &L on hedging instruments as comprehensive income and income tax on the same. After deducting the total of this other comprehensive income as it is a loss, they arrive at the total comprehensive income of Rs. 2,175 crores. The p &L statement is super important because it helps investors, creditors and managers understand how well the company is doing financially. It tells us if the company is making money, controlling its expenses and ultimately if it's profitable or not. It's like a financial report card that shows the company's financial health and performance. Once again, we will use ratio analysis to analyze the company's financial health during the year. The most common ratios calculated from the statement of profit and loss are gross profit margin, operating profit margin, net profit margin, return on assets, return on equity, earnings per share or EPS, and price earnings ratio or PE. Which ratios are most appropriate for a company depends on the nature of its operations and the industry norms. In the case of Titan Limited, they have calculated return on capital employed, return on equity, net profit margin, and several others, but in this video, we will focus only on these three. Return on Capital Employed or ROCE is a ratio that helps assess how efficiently a company generates profits from its capital investments. It provides insights into the company's profitability and efficiency in utilizing its capital to earn returns. Titan Limited has a ROCE of 29.03%. Generally, a higher ROCE is considered favorable, indicating that the company is generating significant profits relative to the capital employed. Return on equity or ROE tells you how much profit a company is making for every rupee of shareholders' equity. A higher ROE means that the company is more profitable, while a lower ROE means that the company is less profitable. Titan Limited has a ROE of 25.77%. According to the latest data from the Center for Research in Security Prices or CRSP, the average ROE for Indian watch and jewelry industry is 14.5%. This means that Titan Limited is generating significantly more profit from its shareholders' equity than the average company in its industry. Net profit margin is a ratio that measures the profitability of a company by comparing the net profit to the revenue. 
it represents the percentage of the profit earned for each unit of revenue and helps assess the company's ability to generate profits and manage expenses. At 8.01%, Titan Limited is not bad. But we must remember one thing when analyzing a company's financial statements. We must look at the industry average for the ratios as well as the ratios of the company's peers. When we look at the bigger picture, we can evaluate where the company stands. This brings us to the end of today's video on how to read the profit and loss statements of a company. It summarizes a company's revenues, expenses, and profits over a period, generally a year. It is one of the most important financial statements as it provides investors and creditors with a clear picture of a company's financial performance. We looked into its components and how to derive meaningful information from it. In the next video, we will discuss the statement of changes in equity. Thank you for watching and remember to like and share the video and subscribe to our channel with Sikhya for more knowledge from the world of finance. See you next time. Till then, have a great day.